Welcome to the tutorial video on FitC8. In this video, we're going to review all the concepts we've gone over so far in this series, and we're going to create a maze that spans multiple rooms. So let's start by reviewing what we know. We know we have the avatar, the thing we move around. We have tiles, which can be over here in the paint tool, things we put down as background or potentially as a wall. And if we enable wall down here under grid, then we cannot pass through it as an avatar. We also have sprites, which are things we can interact with. Now, we also have items, and the line between sprite and item can get a little blurry depending on what we're doing. But generally, sprites are things we interact with, and items are things we use. Generally, once we've interacted with a sprite, it sticks around, but when we interact with an item, we use it or pick it up or do something, and it generally disappears. So far, though, we focused on moving the avatar around. We focused on putting different types of tiles down. We have blocks, and we've made multiple tiles that are our walls and some aren't walls. And we saw how we can do exits and endings. We saw in a previous video how we can create a new room, and then down here in the room tool, go to paint, pick, and over here to exits and endings, and then pop out the exits and endings tool which allows us to place an exit in one room and then move to another room. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this tool and let's go back and review this. So what we wanna do is from this first example room, we wanna create a new room and then we wanna create a maze connecting multiple rooms. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and we move this uh, sprite uh, and make sure of course we're in paint. So moving over here and we're gonna remove this sprite. So for right now we have an avatar, and then what we want to do is then move from this room to another room. So to do that, we're going to be we're going to need an exit. Before we do anything else, though, let's go ahead and give this game a name. So I will call this maze, and for the sake of simplicity, call this room one. Okay. So I want to move from room one to another room. So to do that, I'm going to need a couple of different things. First though, we need to probably put some walls down. So generally, if we're in a maze, we don't pass through the walls. So I'm going to go ahead and for the block tile, so block right here, come down and click on wall, and now they're set to walls, so we can't pass through. And just to verify that, if we come over to play, and we move the avatar using either WASD or the arrow keys, we will notice we can't pass through that tile. So great. So I wanna create a maze. So I'm gonna need another room. So over here in the room tool, I'm gonna to click on the plus to add a new room. And whenever we create a new room, it doesn't have any tiles, the avatar sprites or anything else in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this room two. Now, when we move into room two, I want to use over here in the paint tool, put some blocks down. Such that we have a kind of maze-like structure. Okay. So now that I have this down, what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this room. Now we saw in a previous video how when we have an existing tile or an existing sprite, we can duplicate it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate room two, and this will be room three. Except this time, instead of these running over to the right, they're going to run over to the left. So I'm going to draw this way just a little bit. Come in and close these off by clicking on the grid here. Okay, and same thing over here, kind of pull this in a little bit. And of course, close this off over here and put a little bit of an edge over here. Okay, so we wanna make sure everything is enclosed and then we want to kind of close this off right here. All right, so we've got room one. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Room one, room two, room three. Not a complex maze, but a maze nonetheless. So anytime we move to the edge of one of the rooms, what I wanna do is I wanna send this to another room. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add a new tile. So over here in the paint tool, go ahead, add a new tile. And this time I'm going to draw kind of door shape again that I did in a previous video. And this is going to serve to indicate that when we come close to this, we will pass through to another room. So I'm going to go ahead and name this door. And I'm going to place a door here and here in room one. So I've gone ahead and placed a tile down here. Now I want to make an exit. There are a couple of different ways, in fact, to do that in Bitsy, but the way we've been doing so far is I'm going to change from paint over here to exits and endings. And I'm going to pop out the tool. And I want to add a new exit. So this is going to be a one-way exit. Previously, we used exit, which is a two-way exit. So we moved from one room to another. In a previous video, we moved from the entrance into the zoo and then back again. And this, though, I want to add a one-way exit. So the one-way exit is going to exit here. Let's go ahead and click Move. And move it over here. So when we are in room one, I want to shift us over to... Go ahead and move over to room two to over here. So we will move from room one to room two, and I'm gonna go ahead and create another one-way exit. In this case, when we come over here, click move, click over here. Sorry if I can get my uh, icons lined up correctly. There we go. And then when we go that way, we want to come over to room three and come over here. Okay, got that lined up perfectly. Okay. And we want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to come back over to um, set up a new one way exit. There we go. Okay, one of two, two of two. Got a little bit confused about my own stuff there. So this is our uh, two of two and create a new exit. Go ahead and this time when we are over here, we will move back in room one. Come back over here to, oops, move one, move over here to over here. Okay, so what we want to do then is we want to set this up such that when we enter room one, we go to room two. And when we get over here in room three, we go back to room one. So I just noticed in room three, we're going to need a new tile. So I will come back over to paint down here in the room tool. Come over to paint. Make sure I've got tile and door selected. And go ahead and put my door down. All right. So let's play this right now just to see what this looks like. So we've got a maze. So we've got two doors, but notice it doesn't do anything. These are one way. This moves us to room two. And now I'm in room two. And if I attempt to go this way, nothing will happen. But if I attempt to go up here, we will transition over here to room three. If I come over here, send us back to room one. So we've created a kind of simple maze. Now, I noticed a small little problem over here. We're gonna need a new door. So I'm gonna make sure I'm in paint, come back over to tile, drop in a new one over here. And just for the sake of completeness, let's go ahead and just close this off. So it's not too confusing to potential players. And let's verify everything. So we've got a door here and a door here in room one. In room two, we've got a single door, and over here in room three, we've got a single door. We can't go back once we come in, and we must constantly go forward, and we will loop back from one to two to three, and back to one again. Just using the knowledge we have so far of the avatar, the thing we move around, and different tiles in this case. We didn't really touch on sprites or items other than removing the default sprite. So based on just the things we know so far, we can create a complex game and we could continue to build in the complexity by putting new exits down, two way exits or one way exits, or continue to add new rooms as long as we connect them to the existing rooms, putting exits in one way or two way and connecting them all together. So let's end this though by creating an ending. 
So I'm going to come down here to exits and endings under the room tool right here. I'm going to pop out the tool again. And what I want to do is create a new one. And this will be an ending. And I'm going to place the ending, uh, I think, down here. Oops, move over here in this tool and place it right there. Okay, so that will be the ending. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, but we're not necessarily going to see anything. I'm going to come back over to paint, and this is it right here, our 83. And this time, though, I'm going to create, uh, let's create a new tile again. One more time, and let's call this ending. Oops, make sure I can type correctly. Okay. And let's make this kind of a circle ish. And put an E in there. And it is 813. So we will place it right there. Okay. So now we have one way exit. And we've previously seen two way exits. And now we have an ending. So if we play just to wrap up this video. We have the end and notice the game ends potentially that ending could be in other rooms we could move from room one to room two to room three and put the exit over there or the ending over there just wanted to demonstrate it for this video so just using the things we know moving around the paint tool and the room tool we can start to do quite a bit just again using the knowledge we have to connect rooms with avatars tiles and eventually including sprites and items and colors into all of that knowledge as we continue to build across these videos for Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.